In the future, the world is affected by a deadly virus that infects humans, animals, and plant life. Because of this, the world's oxygen has plummeted and will soon disappear altogether due to the abundance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Humans will have to find another planet to escape Earth's demise. A brilliant scientist, Dr. Stephen Ross, and his group have discovered two artifacts that are alien in origin. According to Stephen, they have recreated these two extraterrestrial objects, the engine and the sphere, and discovered their unique properties. The engine is used for interstellar flight, while the sphere is used for creating life. They have already sent the engine to search for another planet to terraform into a suitable place for living. The only thing left for them to do is to head there and create life. The members of the Galactic Expedition consist of Stephen, Peter, Leona, and David. They are also guided by expert pilots Ryan, Richard, and Frank. Together, all of them will head out into the solar system known as TESS, finding the right planet and create another Earth. On the launch day, Stephen's girlfriend, Amy, tries to catch up with him. But when Amy arrives at the station, she is already too late. Much later, while the ship is en route to where they are heading, Peter and Stephen check the engine before they travel through a wormhole. Peter is thinking about the object's origin, theorizing that it must have been a remnant of a lost advanced civilization. While this is happening, the sphere is forming cracks on its body. Afterward, the members of the crew gather at the cockpit as they will now commence a warp drive that takes them to their destination much faster. The pilot Frank tells them that they will be the first intergalactic explorers in human history. As the crew slowly prepare to travel towards the unknown, some members hold objects that will ease their nerves such as a Bible and a teddy bear. With everything finally set, the rocket ship slowly but surely goes inside the wormhole. However, the system reports a critical error while going in, and all of the crewmates fainted due to the travel. A while later, the ship successfully manages to come to the other side of the wormhole. Steven and the rest all wake up to see that they are in front of a blue planet. Yet, instead of reaching Tess, they have gone to a different solar system, confusing them. For this reason, Steven tells Peter with anger, who is supposed to check if the engine is operational, that he is relieved of his duties until further notice. Stephen believes that the mission has already failed and that they have doomed Earth. Despite knowing that he has checked the engine properly, Peter complies with the captain's wishes. Much later, Stephen somberly looks at the picture of Amy. He later asks the pilots if they can come back to Earth. The pilots reply that as long as they do not know where they are right now, they cannot go back. While checking, the ship's system spots an unidentified object approaching the ship. The unidentified object is actually Peter's lifeless body floating in space. Sometime earlier, against Stephen's order, Peter went inside the engine room to check on it, but now is dead due to unknown reason. The crew members conclude that Peter must have ended his own life after realizing his mistake with the engine. But Leona does not believe that Peter will do this because she has known Peter for eight years. Still, Stephen tells her not to cry for the man who almost ruined humanity's chance of survival and goes back to the cockpit. David then shows him the data of the blue planet in front of them. Upon seeing the data, Stephen concludes that they are lucky because the planet is Earth-like as well and for exploration all they need are breathing masks. Because of this, he thinks that the sphere can be used here as well and orders Ryan to prepare for the trip toward the unknown blue planet. The pilots Ryan and Richard disagree with his command because they still have not examined the planet. But despite the great risk, Stephen demands that they should go to the planet. Therefore, even though the rest of the crew disagrees, they continue the mission via a small landing spacecraft. Only Richard is left behind on the main ship, and he is there to guide the crew to the planet. While reaching the planet, the crew suddenly encounters a great storm which was not there earlier. Because of this, they are forced to improvise. To at least alleviate the impact of their crash landing, they are compelled to remove one of their fuel tanks. 
Afterward, their ship crashes to the rocky surface of the planet. As everything fades into black, Stephen has a brief flashback about Amy back home. There, he gave his girlfriend a fragment of the sphere as a symbolic testament to his love for her. But later, when Stephen had just learned that Amy is having a baby, his girlfriend insisted that he should stay with her and their baby since she was already developing a vaccine for the virus. But Stephen told her that he had to save Earth. It was here that Amy told him that he is only trying to save humanity so that he can be hailed as a savior and as a god and threw away the fragment of the sphere that Stephen gave to her. Back to the present, Pilot Ryan asks Richard about the status of their landing ship. Richard replies that there is no major damage, although they do not have enough fuel to return to the main ship. Leona, who has just entered the room, comments on her frustration about having no means to return. But Stephen tells her that they are on the planet to stay anyway. Even though they have landed on top of a rocky mountain with no protection from the unknown world, Optimistic Stephen thinks that they can just find a deep cave to protect themselves and the sphere. He then orders the crewmates to get the sphere and other essential materials. Yet they have not noticed that underneath their floors there is a gooey and sticky liquid of mysterious origin. Outside the ship, the five crew members all walk to the cave with the sphere and the other tools. There, after finishing installing the sphere and other essential devices for the mission in the cave, Stephen gives a brief speech about their success in finding a new suitable planet. Leona comments that Peter should have been here to see this because he had worked hard for the sphere's creation. Ryan then tells the crew to return immediately because their task is done for now. Back to the landing ship, Richard calls them to talk about his discovery. He had performed a routine inspection to check if something was out of place and he found a sticky liquid dripping from the walls. Also, he plays a video of Peter recording moments before his death. In the video, Peter said that he will record his inspection to prove he had not done any errors. However, when he checked the engine, he saw an otherworldly tentacle of an alien monster that suddenly assaulted him. The video footage then ends. According to him, the alien monster probably originates from the sphere, causing the crew members to call it Trojan. Leona then concludes that it must be the one that killed Peter and warns Richard that the alien life form can still be there inside the main ship. However, Richard had managed to trace Trojan, finding that it followed them to the landing ship instead. It also hitched a ride on the sphere as it was being taken out. It is here that David reports new data from the cave, saying that there is a rise in carbon dioxide and oxygen, and yet no newly developed life form can be traced. At this point, Stephen orders them to regroup and immediately go fix the sphere back in the cave. But Ryan decides to forcibly take command, ordering Stephen that he is relieved of his duties and that the rest should be thinking about their survival. When Leona tells Ryan that only Stephen knows how to handle the sphere, he replies that Stephen has not been honest regarding the monster coming from the sphere. If they had known about this, they would have treated the sphere differently. Also, Peter could have still been alive right now. Ryan demands to play the video from the cave, which shows that Stephen had seen an anomaly earlier in the cave, but decided not to tell anyone about it. Stephen then asks David to join him back to the cave to readjust the sphere of settings. David does not want to go against Ryan's orders, but he gets convinced by Stephen when he tells him it is for their dying planet. As such, the two scientists head out to the cave. Armed with guns, they see some green things in the cave, which means that the sphere is working as intended. While Stephen is readjusting the settings of the sphere, David sees on his radar that Trojan is quickly approaching them. He warns that they need to run, but Stephen is too stubborn to follow. Because of this, David fires a few bullets at the sphere as a threat, prompting Stephen to point his gun toward him. At this point, the alien is already near their location, so they have no choice but to abandon the place immediately. After running inside the dark cave for a while, the two reach the landing ship. However, Trojan, whose appearance is still unrevealed at this point, charges toward them. Fortunately, Stephen closes the door before any danger can befall them. 
Right at the door, Ryan confronts the two for disobeying his orders. As a response, Stephen mocks him, causing Ryan to punch him straight in the face. Suddenly, the alarm goes off, alerting them that the ship has been breached from the outside. The sound of the ringing alarm causes Leona to wake up from her sleep. Without having time to put on any clothes, Leona walks through the corridor of the landing ship in a cautious manner. She then steps foot in a sticky liquid, indicating that the alien is here. All of a sudden, someone grabs her head from behind, but it turns out to be Frank, the other pilot. He tells her to stay quiet and explains that Trojan has entered the ship via the lower deck. To be safe, the two of them enter a nearby laboratory room. However, the alien is inside it, forcing Leona to go out of the room. When Leona waits for him, Frank decides to sacrifice his life by pushing her out of the door and completely closing it. As Leona runs away, she can hear the horrible sound of Frank's terrified scream. She runs toward the command deck where Steven and others are and quickly closes the metal door. Ryan then lashes out at Steven for bringing the alien back to the landing ship and placing their lives in danger. With their communications busted and cameras broken, they have no idea how to locate Trojan or send a distress signal back to the main ship. Steven checks on how Trojan has entered the building and sees that it enters through the walls with the thinnest metal covering. With this, they learn that the alien is highly intelligent. Steven then suggests that they can try to fix the fuse box to restore the cameras and communications. Ryan comments that this is risky and Steven replies that he will be the one to do it because it is his fault anyway and heads out into the dangerous and dark corridors of the ship. After successfully fixing the cameras, David tells Steven to come back as soon as possible because Trojan is approaching his location. Due to this early warning, he manages to survive with Ryan pulling him back quickly using a rope attached to himself. After the rescue, Steven looks at him with disdain, probably because he still hates him even if he saved his life. When Leona asks what to do next, Steven devises a plan that will play out like a bullfight. Here, they will lead Trojan outside through the main corridor and subsequently lock the doors behind it. Once outside, they will attempt to destroy the alien monster by burning it with their engines. In this dangerous plan, with Steven acting as the main decoy, Leona and David will each be in charge of manually opening the airlocks and the air hatch in the lab then Ryan will lure him to the main corridor. And so, they execute this plan to perfection. However, when Trojan finally gets out, the engines cannot start because the alien is intercepting the system's connection. Leona then immediately comes outside to fire at the alien monster. Meanwhile, the engines suddenly start, thus burning Leona to a crisp and killing her. Seeing this, Steven quickly runs back to the ship via the air hatch. The alien chases him, but Steven and David manage to close the door on it. As they do so, Trojan gets one of its tentacles cut off, which attempts to catch Steven, wounding David in the process. Later, Steven is studying the alien's tentacles inside the lab to understand how it functions and how it infects David, who is resting due to his wound. He discovers that the tentacles have the same material as that of the sphere. Also, the bacteria that infected David has a strong defense mechanism, and his blood now holds the key to developing a vaccine against the virus back on Earth. After telling David this, Stephen returns to his examination of the tentacle, discovering that it is a bio-robot that functions to receive transmissions from other aliens. He figures that this must be how the aliens colonize other planets. Ryan then comes in and asks Steven what is going on. After Steven informs him that they need to get back to the sphere, he refuses because it will put lives in danger. He locks the door of the lab and places Steven under arrest, telling him that he is very narcissistic, only wanting to play a hero, and David agrees. A while after their conflict, Steven checks on the fragment of the sphere that he is holding, the one that flew out of the sphere when David fired at it earlier, and shockingly realizes that it looks exactly like the same fragment that he gave to Amy as a gift. He then communicates with Richard to recalculate their position in space, 
only this time he will have to fast forward into the future by 4 billion years. In doing this, they discover that this whole time they are actually on the same earth but have time traveled back before the beginning of life. For this reason, he wants to tell his girlfriend to start producing vaccines to save earth, giving her the information about David's infection which will help in her vaccine research. To do this, Stephen writes a message on the sphere fragment theorizing that Amy will miss him at some point in return for the fragment. If this is done correctly, then Amy will return the fragment to the sphere and reconfigure it, and if not, mankind will cease to exist. At the moment, Richard brings terrible news for Stephen. Ryan is planning to blow up the sphere. Stephen instantly tells Richard to stop him from doing it and opens the airlock. He then immediately heads to the command deck where Ryan is preparing the explosives, convincing him to stop the plan because it will just lead to nothing. All of a sudden, David, whose body is now half infected by alien bacteria, kills Ryan with a gun. While firing at Ryan, he says that Trojan has chosen him and that humans are simply malfunctions of the sphere. Stephen tries to tell him that his own daughter will cease to exist if he continues, but David replies that at least she and the other people will not suffer by not being born. At this point, Stephen takes a nearby Rubik's Cube and throws it into the other side, which distracts David, giving Stephen ample time to shoot David, who retreats. Afterward, Stephen starts the countdown of the explosives set by Ryan, then heads outside the landing ship and fires a flare gun. A while later, he and David have a shootout in the corridor. In the meantime, Trojan appears, lured by the fight of the flare gun from earlier. Steven manages to evade the alien and runs down a shaft that leads to a corridor. He proceeds to the command deck, but David takes his gun. As he is about to shoot, David's chest gets punctured by the alien's tentacles, which allows Steven to run away. Finally, the timer of the explosives winds down to zero and detonates, destroying Trojan and the landing ship. Stephen contacts Richard to come and rescue him after he goes to the cave to place the fragment there. Inside the cave, Stephen returns the fragment to the sphere, enabling him to establish contact with the future where Amy is. Amy eventually sees the fragment and the inscriptions in it, prompting her to quickly run back to the cave where the original sphere is. After Amy also puts back the fragment, the past and the future converge enabling the couple to see each other. Stephen admits that she was right about the vaccine, giving her the formula of the antigen that he had discovered. After bidding goodbye, the communication ends and Stephen slowly dies in the cave due to a lack of oxygen. But for his sacrifice, Amy develops the necessary vaccine that eventually saves the world. Although this movie has decided to complicate things by introducing the time travel aspect of the story, it essentially provides the viewers with a great lesson about humility and how one's stubbornness can lead to bad results. It also shows us that sometimes the solution to a problem can be simple, which is made evident by the fact that it is Amy's vaccine, the true solution to Earth's woe, rather than going out to find a new one home.